Hello, and welcome to Rogue Traders. Hello, hello. Oh. Dan. Hi. People who regularly use dangerous items need to exercise caution. And tonight, I'm particularly thinking about electricity and pesticides. It's a funny combination, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Let's take the bike here as an example. It can sometimes be dangerous, but luckily, Dan is a highly skilled bike operative with years of experience behind him. Yes, I take my responsibilities very seriously, always. The same can't be said for tonight's rogues, as you're about to see. Yes, the clowns are in town. And we're taking them down. Bed bugs and ballyhoo. We meet the Cavalier Pest Controller with a canister of chemicals who likes to splash it all over. It's possibly the most unprofessional work I've ever witnessed. It's back to school for an electrical fool. This is first year apprentice stuff. This guy is just not competent to do what he's doing. And when he tries to give us the slip, we hit the trick. <laughs> easy as you go, mate. Easy as you go. That's all in the next Fall About Laughing half hour. Looking at ADN Pest Control. They're based in Kent, but they operate all over the southeast. Like here, Highbury in North London. You know, Dan calls it Ivory. He doesn't say his H's. So you take the Mickey, you get off the bike, all right? And we're coming to see Sasha Taylor, who had a visit from ADN last year. What did she have? Mice, fleas, waspies? I don't know, I haven't been in yet, have I? That's the point of the interview. OK. While I'm in there, Danagram, try and work out what this stands for. A, D, N. Well, that's easy. What does it stand for? Oh, ah. OK. Go for it. All right. ADN. Ants are damn nonsense. Andy digs nandos. The artist days are numbered. Ant and deck are naughty. It's a game you can play at home. Now, look, here's Sasha. Her problem started when she found some unwelcome visitors in her bedroom. Sasha, I, I don't think I've ever been bitten by bed bugs. What's it like? It's sore. You come up in, like, red blotches. My whole face was just bitten. Well, obviously, it's itchy. It's very itchy. Clearly, Sasha needed the help of a professional. She looked online and found ADN Pest Control, a respectable-looking outfit who said they'd come out quickly and solve her itchy issue for the reasonable sum of £125. But as soon as one of their technicians turned up, she began to worry. He just started spraying it. He didn't really look around. He just lifted the bed up, he didn't investigate any. Sasha was right to be worried. Pest controllers should always inspect a property thoroughly first to make sure they're using the right treatment. They must also keep the homeowner informed about chemicals that they use, as they can be dangerous in the wrong hands. So do you know what pesticide it was that he was using? No. He didn't wear a mask or anything, and I didn't have a mask on or anything like that. You were still in the room? Yeah. He didn't tell you to, to no. leave? Nothing like that? Sasha paid ADN the money, but ten days later she realised the bugs were still there. She complained to the company. They sent somebody else out, but this still didn't cure the problem. So she decided to cut her losses and call out a different company, costing her a further 150 quid. What do you think about ADN as a company? The way their website was, they get rid of the problem, so you trust them. It was just really a bad experience. And there's, there's nothing like not getting any sleep. No. <laughs> DNA. Bed bugs roasting on an open fire. <sighs> Sorted it out? I tell you what, it's taken me a while, but I've come up with this one. Dan, how about that? Yeah, come on. Clever, am I? Yeah, brilliant. How yeah. long did that take you? Couple of hours. As you might expect, we now need to put ADN's work under the microscope. The sums of money involved aren't huge here, but once again, when we're talking about pest control, we're talking about chemicals that can be dangerous. So we need someone to supervise it all. And the man to do this is bed bug guru David Kane. He has some peculiar ideas on how to make a house look like it's crawling with bed bugs. You may want to put your pork scratchings to one side for a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to take 
some dead bed bugs and some cast off skins from the, the collection here, put them down into the frame of the bed. We're also going to take some bed bug poo, re dissolve it, and apply some spots onto the sheets. And finally, we're going to use a simple black marker pen to dab some certain areas to make it look as if there are fetal traces. So it's possible to make it look like there are bed bugs in our place even though there aren't? Absolutely. It won't have any live samples in it because obviously it's not sensible to release them deliberately into a property, but there will be everything else to make it look like there has been and still is an infestation. Thank goodness we're not in 3D yet. Now we have an expert and the vital ingredients to make it look like we're plagued by bed bugs. We just need to find a house. Uh, that one, yeah, in Bexley will do. Rig some cameras and we'll find a stooge. Yep, he'll do. That's Mark. David is planting poo, blood, and carcasses around the room. I don't get to say that very often. Then he takes his place in the hide and we're ready to roll. Hello. Hello, mate. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Mick. How many rooms is there? I believe it's just in one. Just in one room? Yeah. Right. Let's see if I can see any of them. The pest controller has a quick look, but he can't see any signs of the bugs, even though we littered them all around the bed. That isn't one. Right. But they're normally about that big and similar colours to that. That looks just looks like a bit of fluff or something. Despite not seeing any sign of infestation, Mick starts getting his chemicals out anyway. I mean, he's definitely decided he wants to treat the area, but he's not actually found any evidence of bed bugs yet. So what's this? This is called Simitrol. OK, Simitrol is a strong chemical frequently used to treat bed bugs. It's so toxic, you need a licence to buy it, and to use it, you must be competent. That's the law. Hold on a minute, there seems to be a problem with Mick's kit. Do you know what? Because I haven't used it for a while, it's got no ice at the top. Chemicals should always be kept in a controlled environment, which clearly hasn't happened here. Hold on, what's he doing now? That, is that safe? I'd... That's very dangerous. He's leaving a tank of insecticide which isn't secure on a surface which isn't stable. Simitrol is an irritant and must not be used on bedding, so he definitely shouldn't be balancing it there, just in case it spills like this. Don't worry about this, this is all dry, all right? Oh, so that's all right then. Our man has sloshed it all over the place. The bed won't be safe to be slept on for days, but it's not just his customer's health and safety he's being cavalier about. Listen to what he says as he spills the insecticide. I sometimes wear, wear a mask. I think they, they might have some stuff downstairs that falls uh, sure, into got, his DIY stuff. No, I've got a mask in my car, oh, in, in the van. Oh, right, OK. So it's not that, uh, it, it's, a, it's, not, it's not that bad. Let's see that again. Unflipping believable. Simitrol can cause respiratory problems, so it's always recommended to wear a mask, but Mick doesn't seem to give a stuff about that. Why would you want to wear a mask? Uh, let me think. With insecticide, why would you, uh... Yeah, that would be a good reason. That was almost a face full of insecticide. He's making a right mess of this. How's it going, mate? Mm -hmm. All right, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll clean up after. Is it? <laughs> oh, I'm going to need some more hot water. This is still frozen in there. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? A little bit embarrassing. It's possibly the most unprofessional work I've ever witnessed he hasn't actually managed to spray any. He's poured more into the room than he's managed to actually apply. Mick's decided the only way to carry on is to start again from the beginning. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to pour this away, all right? Yeah. So it won't hurt anything in the yeah. mouth. I wouldn't tell you otherwise. He's going to pour it away. Where is he pouring it? Ah, uh, that's bad. He's pouring it down the plug hole in the bath. That's safe to do that, yeah? Yeah. No worries. Yeah. That is completely illegal to do because Insecticides are all extreme marine pollutants and they cannot be poured just down a standard drain. So what's actually got in it? It's, uh, I don't know all, all the chemicals, it's constant. Have you got the internet? He doesn't seem to know what the active ingredients of the insecticide are. How can you work with something safely unless you fully understand it? So do you need any training for this then or...? 
For this, yeah. it's about a cup, couple of months. It, it's half of it's all common sense. Well, that's a worry then, isn't it, really? Because Mick doesn't look as though he has much of that. Now he is spraying the bed. It is not licensed for use on fabrics and bedding. So this is a flagrant breach of the law. For the record, he's meant to spray the woodwork and pick any signs of bed bugs off the mattress, not use the chemicals on it. <coughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Gesundheit. You do remember we said Simitrol can cause respiratory problems. He really is starting to suffer from a runny nose now. Yo! Ah, oh, he's finally found the bed bugs. I think you've got some here, mate, these bed bugs. Ugh. You see them? He's been spraying the room for 10, 15 minutes, and now he's actually discovered the evidence. It's completely the wrong way around. Our man then gives the room a super soaking. He's using far too much, and the law says you should not use it excessively. He definitely seems to be on a mission to attempt to spray everything in the room, whether it needs it or not. Can you help me stand this up, please? Yeah, no worries, mate. Stooge Mark should absolutely not be asked to come into the room while he's spraying, and he certainly shouldn't touch anything with the chemical on unless he's got gloves. You see, it's a skin irritant. All right, I'm going to leave that standing up like that, OK? OK, I'm just going to wash my hands. Why you do the things you do? It's a good question. It feels like Finally, he's all sprayed out. Now, just a handy tip for the homeowner. They can sleep on it tonight after six hours, basically just make sure that it's okay. dry. When, it, when it's dry, it's as good as gold. Kids can roll around on the floor. Children, when they're rolling around on the floor, touch things and put their hands in their mouth. This isn't safe advice to be given. Oh, come on, uh, I don't need that. Don't need that. <laughs> So how much will this fiasco set us back? £102.93 is a reasonable price, if he'd done a good job. But he's left our house in a dangerous mess. Bed bug bedlam. Back to pests. Quite literally. It's time for us to catch up with the boss of ADN. We found out his name is David Nixon, and he's been running this company for a while, apparently out of an address in Welling, North Kent. Here we are, Tyrrell Avenue. This is where he's supposed to be. I'm going to have a look, all right. Okay. On all of ADN Pest Control's paperwork, they state that the company is based at Tyrrell Avenue. But we can't find him or any trace of his company here. Hold on, why am I doing all this legwork? Why not use this bike, yeah? and go and have a look at the addresses where we think he might be. Yeah? Work. Bit of work? <laughs> I'm going to go this way. David Nixon is an elusive man. It seems he's evaded customers for years by giving out duff addresses. Why do I always have to do the, the hard work? You see, that's, that's rubbish. I'm taking some time out now. This is what I like to do. ADN was once a limited company. Then it was based in Dartford, but it looks like they shut up shop there years ago. Hello? Mate, I can't find this company anyway. What are you up to anyway? No, I'm a bit busy. I'm a bit busy right now. Can you, di just di can you just deal with it? Yeah. Solutions, please, not problems. OK, bye. And now we think he might be in Ashford. The phone book says snipe close, but it looks like he's moved on from there too. Mate, I've been everywhere, I can't find him. Yeah? No. I should have told you actually, um, I've had a tip off. I know exactly where he is. Really? You have a tip off? Yeah, mate. What have you been up to then? I've been uh, making notes. We've been given some tippy-top secret information. It seems David Nixon doesn't have an office after all. We've got these pictures of him taken at dawn on a street corner in North London. He meets our pest controller, Mick, here on Fridays. In fact, he meets all his staff. They visit him one by one at his car to get chemicals and maybe even to get paid. So, 
We're on our way. It's now seven. No, it's quarter past six. <laughs> and we're on our way to Tottenham to catch up with Mr. David Nixon, who we believe to be the owner, manager, managing director, call him what you will, of ADN Pest Control. David Nixon's pest controller is breaking the law and handling dangerous chemicals without a care in the world. He's so clueless, we wondered if his boss himself even knows what a bed bug looks like. So Dan's offered to, you know, help him out. Ooh, I'm a bed bug. Can you see the similarity? Yeah. We're ready for literally anything. Or, lit no, not literally, but almost anything. We're in position. Go, go, go. And this is him. Hello. Hello, Dave. How are you doing? Dave, can we ask you about ADN pest control? Just give us a second. About that's a bed bug, you see. That's what one looks like. He saw us and he bugged out. Dansky. I was gonna give him a hug. I got all dressed up. After we confronted David Nixon, we wrote him a letter. After he received that letter, David Nixon did get back in touch with us. It, hold on a second. Did get back in touch with us after the letter that we gave him uh, and said thank you for bringing this poor workmanship to his attention. Just a second. And that he had sacked Mick, and that's a result. What? Take what? a look at this. Look, that's the guy, Mick. They said he sucked. Look, he's meeting up with Dave. He looks like Dave is earning him something. Do you think they're still working together? When was this footage taken? After the letter. OK, so it's the old, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We'll carry on as normal. Ploy. Adrian. A definite nuisance. And we'll be seeing you lot even sooner. Trademark sign off. Lucas, your days are numbered. EastEnders is next. The lives and loves of a group of old friends hold many a secret in BBC One's comedy drama, Reunited at Nine.